What happens when you flush? Let's talk about the best seat in your home or business. When you flush your toilet, lots of things happen. First, the clean water in the toilet bowl or sink turns to wastewater and begins a journey to where it started, as clean water. Many things can go wrong along the way, but by taking proper care of the system, we can help wastewater safely reach its destination before it harms the environment. Now that you've closed the toilet lid, a lot of other things happen. The wastewater in the bowl is forced by gravity through a sewer collection line called a lateral. This is the pipe that runs underground from your house and connects to the parish's gravity sewer collection system. The public sewer system we have is, is typical of any modern day sewer system. Uh, back prior to 1960, uh, we had septic tanks uh, throughout the parish and with the advent of public wastewater treatment systems and sewer systems, uh, the parish began transitioning into uh, what we call uh, a collection of sewage gravity lines, which is actually pipes that take the sewage away from your house. Uh, bring it to one collection point and then from that collection point it keeps transporting downstream and it eventually gets to a wastewater treatment plant where it's treated and then the discharge is pumped to the Mississippi River. The gravity system consists of over 1,300 miles of pipes of various materials and sizes. That's the distance from Jefferson Parish to New York and it's interconnected by manholes, over 21,000 of them, which allow access for cleaning and maintenance of the pipes. In the 1980s, we had approximately 14 wastewater treatment plants throughout Jefferson Parish. Uh, on the east bank, we consolidated down to one treatment facility, and that's located at the Clearview uh, Parkway and Earhart Expressway that treats all of the wastewater from the east bank of Jefferson Parish. On the west bank of Jefferson Parish, we consolidated it down into three major treatment facilities and the reason we couldn't go to one was due to geographical boundaries. We have one treatment plant in Harvey which takes everything east of the Harvey Canal. We have one treatment plant in Marrero which takes everything from the city of West Wego all the way to the Harvey Canal. And then we have one treatment plant in Bridge City which takes everything from the city of West Wego all the way out to St. Charles Parish Line. Due to the flat topography and below sea level and the poor soil conditions we have, we cannot dig deep, deep, deep sewers. So we have a very shallow sewer system. As a result, once you get to a certain depth, we have to build what we call a sewer lift station that actually picks the sewer up from a lower elevation, raises it up, and allows it to start gravity flowing again back to a lower elevation. Then we pick it up with a lift station and continue the process until it gets to the treatment plant. Lift stations typically consist of a wet well, which is a large container-like structure that fills with wastewater transported by the gravity system, pumps, which pump wastewater out of the wet well and into a force main, and various valves and fittings, which help regulate the flow of wastewater and allow maintenance crews to perform maintenance on the lift station. We have more sewer lift stations than the cities of Houston, Atlanta, and New Orleans combined that we have to maintain. The 505 sewer lift stations we have run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So therefore they require a lot of electrical costs and they require a lot of mechanical maintenance costs. When the volume of water entering the collection system exceeds the capacity of that part of the system, a sanitary sewer overflow occurs. The biggest problems we encounter from an operation and maintenance perspective is in the lift stations themselves, we always find things that are not supposed to be in the sewer system. Uh, rags, uh, a lot of these disposable, they say disposable flushable wipes are not truly disposable or flushable. They clog up our pumps and then we have to clean the pumps out and, and, and that clogs up the system. We have a lot of people who dispose of their grease in the sewer system. That is one of our biggest maintenance nightmares. Uh, that we encounter on a daily basis. When it floats in the pipe, it will find itself, it floats on top of the water. Grease is lighter than the water, so it floats on top. And as it hits something, let's say a tree root has in, infiltrated the line or the pipe is broke, that grease will continue to accumulate on that tree root and, and it'll continue to build up. And eventually, it will build up and it will seal the entire pipe. Uh, when it gets hard, it's like concrete. 
so it's very difficult for us to get through. During a sewer overflow, wastewater flows out of the sewerage system into surrounding areas where it can flow freely into the parish's drainage system, just like rainwater. Since water that enters the drainage system is not treated before it flows into surrounding waterways, SSOs are a major source of pollution for Lake Pontchartrain. We typically don't treat rainwater. Um, it typically just flows into whatever local body of water, in our case, Lake Pontchartrain. Releases of untreated municipal sewage is a significant problem for the lake. SSOs pose both a human health and environmental hazard, as raw sewage can enter homes, businesses, and local waterways. Another major contributor to SSOs is the disposal of items which harm the system by residents, businesses, and industries. Items commonly flushed by residents, including diapers, facial tissues, baby wipes, napkins, dental floss, sanitary items, and many other items can clog pipes and pumps, reducing the ability of the collection system to transport wastewater. Having looked at the wastewater collection system, let us now take a look at where the wastewater is transported. The wastewater treatment plant. When wastewater reaches a treatment plant, it flows through a series of treatment processes designed to make the discharged water safe for the receiving stream or body of water, the Mississippi River. First, the wastewater enters the treatment process through the bar screens. The bar screens filter out large objects like bricks or tree branches. After passing through the screens, the wastewater is routed to two aerated grit chambers to remove smaller objects like gravel, seeds, coffee, and food waste. Following the grit chambers, wastewater is moved to the primary clarifiers. The essential function of the primary clarifiers is to allow solids to settle to the bottom of the structure, where they're collected and sent to the solids processing unit. With primary treatment now complete, the wastewater is moved to aeration basins. Here, a biological treatment process takes place in which a mixture of wastewater and activated sludge is aerated in the basin. The active biological solids oxidize the waste matter. This biological treatment process is intended to mimic nature in which bacteria, or bugs, eat the raw waste in the water. With this process, the biological solids which contain the bugs can be recycled, meaning that the treatment process fuels itself. From the aeration basins, the wastewater is pumped to one of eight secondary clarifiers, which are the final settling basins of the wastewater treatment plant. The secondary clarifiers remove the remaining biological materials, which are either sent to the sludge processing unit or are returned to the aeration basin to refuel the process. Finally, the clarified wastewater is transferred to a chlorination station where it undergoes final disinfection. Upon disinfection, a pump station pumps the treated water through a force main to a discharge on the Mississippi River, where it re-enters the environment. Upon completion of the treatment process, all contaminants have been removed from the wastewater, so that it is in conformance with the permit issued by the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality for water being discharged to the environment. In fact, the wastewater is nearly drinking water clean. The next time you flush your toilet or clean your dishes, take a moment to consider where your wastewater is going. What are you flushing and the impact you can have on the sewerage system? Every one of us who live, work, and play in Jefferson Parish could do our part to ensure that the sewage system operates properly. But there's a lot of things that have to happen for our system to continue to operate properly. And it takes a lot of people and a lot of money, and we would really appreciate the cooperation of the residents by not doing things to damage everyone's sewer system. Residents can help Jefferson Parish reduce sanitary sewer overflows by not pouring oil, grease, or fats down the drain and not putting non-flushables in the toilet. Once an SSO occurs, sewerage flows freely into drainage ditches and the storm sewer system. Water that enters the storm sewer system flows into drainage canals and is eventually pumped into Lake Pontchartrain, the Mississippi River, and surrounding waterways affecting the waters that we all depend upon.